Hello viewers, I'm Paul Dvorak, editor of Wind Power Engineering, with just a few words about a feature story on turbine towers. It's written by Peter Hansen, a vice president with North Star Wind Towers in Blair, Nebraska. According to Hansen, wind farm developers are eyeing taller towers for several good reasons. For one, an 80 meter tower can let a modern 2 to 3 megawatt uh, wind turbine produce more power than if it were installed at 60 meters. Better yet, taller towers will let larger turbines enter the market. Taller towers also let rotors spin in less turbulent wind thereby decreasing their wear and fatigue. Of course, there are added costs associated with them, and uh, decision makers will have to weigh uh, their benefits uh, to, against the costs and, and then decide. There are, here are a few figures, though. Using an average 7 meters per second wind speed, the output from a typical 2.5 megawatt rated turbine installed at 80 meters reaches about 8 million kilowatt hours per year. But increase the height by 20 meters to 100 meters total, and the turbine could produce close to 1 million kilowatt hours per year more. Now with a purchase power agreement of about six cents per kilowatt hour, the 100 meter tower produces an additional annual value of $60,000. But here's the rub. A conventional 100 meter tower in the U.S. is relatively costly and in many instances it nearly doubles the cost of an 80 meter tower. And that does not include increased transportation costs that come with large tower sections. Simply increasing the height of a conventional welded tubular tower may not be the most effective way to reach the greater wind speeds. An alternative design will be needed. A modular 100 meter design provides one solution to the cost problem. Now, towers with a continuous taper or an increasing taper are the most efficient way to handle, high, uh, handle the higher uh, wind turbine loads. Uh, the design from Hansen's firm uses panels bolted together in the field to eliminate transportation restriction. The design also allows adding tower panels to increase the tower diameter at the height. Increased diameters allow thinner wall thicknesses, resulting in, says the author, a more efficient use of steel, thus the lower weight and cost. Flanges at the top and base allow for a conventional connection with the turbine and foundation. Flanges use the same mounting criteria as conventional towers. However, the larger bottom diameter presents new options when designing the foundation. For instance, conventional towers have a diameter of only about 4.2 meters. Therefore, there's limited amount of area under the flange to conduct the load to the foundation. With increased loads from the turbine and tower, it's necessary to distribute the load over a larger area. And this is done with a case embedment piece that goes a few meters into the foundation. It helps distribute load over a larger surface area inside the foundation, but it costs an additional $40,000. Now Hansen says such additions are not incurred in modular towers because they use a larger flange area at the base over which to distribute the load. Modular towers must be assembled before erection. And his design uses slip critical or friction connections for site assembly, a method used by many wind turbine towers. These tried and true friction connections are widely used in bridges and high rise buildings where post inspection is limited. Now, for more details on modular towers, uh, look to uh, windpowerengineering.com.